The definition of money, money is nothing but the most liquid commodity in a given economic system. If we're talking about a global economy, that would be gold because of its physical properties. It is immutable, it doesn't change, it is divisible, it has a low melting point so you can make it into coins, it doesn't oxidize, etc., etc. That is what makes it the most liquid commodity in the world and therefore the best money. What Brett doesn't really understand is that all of the monetary media, meaning the dollars and the debt and the credit cards and whatever that we use are merely based on money. They are substitutes for money or derivatives of money. They are not money itself. If I exchanged the word money for most liquid commodity and the question is, do you see any way of justice or whatever the word was in a system run by the most liquid commodity? Well, what ever else are you going to use for a money besides the most liquid commodity? If the most liquid commodity no longer exists, then people would simply use for money the next most liquid commodity that exists in that economic system. If I were to replace the question from an evolutionary standpoint, do you see any chance of justice in a system run by oxygen? Well, we all need oxygen. So we can imagine that the system is unjust now and there's oxygen. So what, but how could you have any system without oxygen? And that doesn't make sense. Is that he's looking for a way to section off some kind of process to determine what is good for general human welfare and try to section that off from an economic system. But you can't do that because everything is going to be run by money in terms of a division of labor. And that is because everybody is mortal. Everybody has a finite amount of time. So if you have to charge them with determining what is more valuable for the general human welfare or however he puts it, then you're going to have to pay them for their time because they are mortal. And if you pay them for their time, they are going to be financially incentivized to determine which projects uh, contribute the best to human welfare in a general sense, and they are going to become corrupted. There is no way to section off determining which projects to do and which projects not to do and make that decision-making process somehow uneconomic. That is impossible. When you get down to the individual level, an individual entrepreneur is going to decide because of money signals what projects to embark upon and what projects not to. Now, the way I can describe honest money, which is gold and honest substitutes for gold that are not inflated over the gold supply, it could also be silver or any, whatever the li most liquid commodity happens to be. We know from economic history that this happens to be gold in a global system. You can differentiate the current monetary system from an honest money system in, from an evolutionary standpoint by analyzing the difference between natural selection and artificial selection. Right? Dogs, current domesticated dogs and their different breeds are not naturally selected. If you were to release uh, certain breeds of dogs in the wild, they probably wouldn't survive because their genes, the flappy ears and these little toy poodle things or whatever their uh, interesting characteristics are to humans, they are not naturally selected for. So there's something in the system that is driving the evolutionary chain to something else that would not be selected for naturally in the environment, right? Natural selection would choose for ferocious wolves with incredible survival skills, etc., etc. It wouldn't be choosing for little toy poodles uh, that can get eaten by snakes or <laughs> whatever. The system of artificial selection, it is these uh, characteristics that are being selected for by humans that are imposing themselves on the evolutionary system and driving evolution in a certain direction. So it's the same thing with the current monetary system, is that all prices of every good, all the time, the only way they can make any sense and drive a division of labor that can divide value and resources across the globe is if those prices are based on the price array of the day before. The only way that you know how much work you have to do in a given day and how much you have to save and whatever it is that you gotta do that day is because you are basing your knowledge on the prices of the day before. It is a continuum and this goes all the way back in time, all the way back to when the dollar 
was nothing but a receipt for a certain amount of gold. Because a dollar, even now, is nothing but a gold substitute, the problem is in the monopoly of the Federal Reserve that has the exclusive right to bring these dollars based on a chain in history that goes all the way back to dollars as a gold substitute 100% backed, goes all the way back and now they have the right to print these receipts for gold into the economy and distort the price system. Who gets those dollars first? It is the federal government because what does the Federal Reserve buy with its newly issued dollars? They buy government debt. Now the first people that spend this new gold substitute into circulation, they are able to siphon off resources from the environment before anyone else does. And by doing so, they put more money into circulation and they take out more resources. That is government spending. When they do that, it raises prices for everyone else and it makes everyone poor. This is a wealth transfer from wage earners from the middle class to the government to the people that are connected to the government because it enables the government to pay off its buddies in a very systematic organized way and then you create a system that is incentivized to flatter the government because they have through their central bank the ability to print more gold substitutes into existence diluting them and taking resources for themselves Forming some kind of committee that will decide what projects are contributing to human flourishing and which ones aren't will necessarily be corrupted. This is an impossible thing and it is exactly what the Bolsheviks and the communists decided to try to do with the Soviet system. At the beginning, uh, they were probably honest and they wanted to do the best that they could and they were really trying to be equitable maybe at the very beginning. but. There is no way to decide which projects to embark on or to order people to embark on without immediately being corrupted and being paid off. This is the path to communist totalitarian dictatorship, and I know that you don't intend it that way, but that's what it does. What you need instead is simply a fair system of money that where inflation itself, meaning inflating the gold supply, the gold substitute supply, the amount of dollars in circulation over the actual money supply, which is the gold supply, and thereby allowing the party that has its thumb on the scales that can print those gold substitutes into existence and thereby siphon off resources itself at the expense of everyone else. That system is the unjust system, and that is the system that causes capital concentration in the friends of the government that can bid on this money by currying political favor and it infects every system. It infects healthcare, it infects education, it infects food, it infects every system that we are in.